My heart's just been pounding. Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Looks like a tiny little alligator or something. 10 years I've been looking for this. <laughs> Still cannot believe it, man. So we're just walking down this little gully here. We just walked up onto this. It's a perfect little lizard skull and it's just sticking out of the ground. Can you see those two? Yep. The eye is right there. And I think there's some skeleton material as well. Just the very tip of his rostrum is missing there. And it looks like, look closely over here, it looks like there's some bones going back for the rest of the skeleton. And these lizards have little bony scoots running all down them. So that's what these little blades that are loose right here are. Still cannot believe it, man. Yeah, I think we just gotta go way around him on the other side. Take that somewhat sizable block. Might be a little disarticulated and his scoots are kinda spreading out, you know? Was yours in a little concretion too? Oh yeah, but just the just the skull, the rest of it around it was not. Was it a pretty complete skull? Uh it had was missing one side of the lower jaw. And uh they were not in the right place like yours. Hold on, hold on. little pile here. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think. Is there no chance that he's like kind of going down? Yeah, he could be. He could be curled up if we're just diving down. I still want to take him out on a big block anyway, so I have a big chunk of matrix. So I want to bring that any closer. Okay. Gluing up the whole block so that it comes out in one piece. And then the matrix can be prepped more carefully so all those little scales can be preserved that are in there. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe you called it. Ten years I've been looking for this <laughs> I just think you're going a little deeper in case he's shooting it down. Oh yeah, I will. So we have the, the block that we want to take out pedestaled here. And now we're going to try to split it off the base and remove it as one piece. There we go. Lifted in here. Uh, losing the bottom. Check for bones in the bottom. I think we're good. Is that foil handy? Yeah. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. I just need to turn the whole thing over right now, okay? I'm just going over on me, okay? You got glue? Bit of an exciting day. I'm gonna work on this Peltosaurus skull. This is a very rare fossil. It's a type of armored lizard, and here you can see the front of the skull here. This is the eye socket and these are the lower jaws. So this skull's upside down right now, and this is essentially the position it was found in. I'm gonna document the preparation process and some of why I'm making the decisions I'm making as I work, and I think this should turn out to be a pretty spectacular fossil. So when I'm starting a fossil prep project, the first thing that I do is think about 
the final presentation of the piece. How can I best showcase this fossil and the context it was fossilized in? Some preparators like to remove the fossil fully from the matrix, but for me, that takes away some of the context of, of how this came to be and the awe that this animal, this organism, has been trapped in this rock. So I always like to go for in matrix mounts. So I include the original matrix as the armature or mounting for the fossil. And I want to expose the back of the skull because with an armored lizard like this, that is really where you get this beautiful bone armored scutes, really impressive detail. And I wanna showcase that. <laughs> from this side of the block. And on this piece, you know, it would take a long time to chisel all of this away. So what I'll do here is I'll perforate holes with this modified chisel tip uh, along this line and split that piece off in a block because I'm pretty sure there's no skeletal elements up in this area. <laughs> repositioned again and now I'm gonna work on exposing more of these armored scoots coming in off the back of the skull. So there's the eye and these are the first four scoots here and hopefully those continue back and part of the body is there as well. <laughs> each of these armored plates, my heart's just been pounding because it's just exceptional to have this kind of preservation where each of these little scoots is perfectly in place as it was when it was alive. But as I'm following these scoots back, I'm getting a little worried because I'm finding some of them that are out of place. And that's not a good sign if you're looking for an entire articulated animal, especially with something as delicate as these scootings here. that there's too big of a erosional gap there. And so this whole piece needed to be taken off so that I can prepare this side and reattach it and close that gap. But while I was doing that, I found, I don't think you can really see it too well, but right here sticking out, that is his limb. That's his back leg. So his body, there's his head, his body curls around, looks like a tiny little alligator. 
millimeter or something. And then his little leg, back leg, should go into this block. So I'm hoping it's all articulated because that would be a fantastic display piece if it was. So anyways, this block will be removed and reattached after some delicate micro prep later on in the process. the specimen over now so this is the underside and I'm working on this area because there's some tail vertebrae exposed right here and I'm hoping that that tail comes down the other side and will curl around up this side of the rock that would just be a dream come true in terms of preservation you know that's unheard of to have a specimen that complete <laughs> basic chisel work on this specimen and now I really want to clean it up with some air abrasion and that will kind of give me a better idea of where to do the final prep and what's there and what I still need to do. <laughs> of the skeleton. This is the kind of belly armor here. You can see one of his arms sticking up here and the other one's actually sticking out down here at the bottom. The tail wraps all the way around and unfortunately this section's missing up here. But it's a very complete specimen. So this is a step that is um, kind of often underlooked in fossil prep. Most of the bones are already exposed here. What I have to do now is go in and contour the matrix so that it's always sloping up toward the bone. You can see that the arm here is on a little pedestal. I wanna carve that matrix so all of it slopes up towards the shape of the fossil. And that will really help the eye pick out the shape of the fossil versus the rock around it. It's really essential in framing the piece and really showcasing it so it jumps out. Some of the scales actually came out in this block. So I had to prepare those out separately and now I'm going to reattach them along this side here. Right now I'm applying a thin layer of paraloid glue to the specimen and this will help make sure that it's waterproof and also just to make sure that the matrix is stabilized around the really delicate areas. 